I'm playing Dr. Quandry. Island of Dr. Quandary is the educational game that I played the most growing up. While everyone else was knee deep in Math Blaster or Read a Rabbit, I was all about the Dr. Q. It was a game I never actually owned myself as a child. It was one that I ended up playing with a childhood friend over at his house. And to give you an idea of how old it is, you can install it on a floppy disk. But I didn't play it on these. I played it on one of these bad boys. Ah, the secret island of Dr. Quandry. This reminds me of the time of Power Rangers, Graham Crackers, and unrealistic life dreams. The game starts out innocently enough at a fair, where apparently Dr. Quandry is a huge hit. Look at all the Q merchandise he's been selling. Although, I am concerned for the people in the Ferris wheel. It's not even moving and that, uh... That doesn't look too safe. Dr. Quandry beckons me forth to his little stand here, and challenges me to play Troggle Shoot, where you shoot Troggles. Wait a second, Troggles?! DUDE! Those were the things in Number Munchers! It all makes sense now! Dr. Quandry made the number munchers! At least now I get to shoot the little bastards. Yeah, you guys had this coming for years. Blast apart enough troggles and Dr. Quandry is kind enough to let you pick one of the dolls from the top shelf of prizes. There's beginner, OD nary, and difficult. I see what you did there. As a kid, I mostly chose beginner because he looks like he's having a good time either way. I tried Odinary once or twice, but I never picked Difficult. Why? Because of that face. So malformed. <laughs> but you know what? I'm kind of starting to feel bad for all these years of neglect. So let's go ahead and take old Pumpkinhead here. I'm sure I could use him as a wine cork or something. Wait, what the? Oh my god! Say what you want, but for a 1993 kids game, this image is pretty disturbing. So I get trapped inside the doll and wake up on Dr. Quandry's island, which I believe is a secret. Quandry taunts that the only way to get off his island is to defeat all of his challenges located on the island, which gives ingredients to a recipe that'll make everything back to normal. Aw oh man, check out Pumpkinhead! Why didn't I ever pick this guy sooner? He's a total dude bro! Hawaiian shorts, a total swagger to his walk, eyes that looks like he has a hangover from a night of binge drinking, a smirk suggesting that he made out with my girlfriend at a party, and BAM! Popped collar. I am sorry for neglecting you for so long, Pumpkinhead. You are the coolest. Let's get going on this whole island puzzles thing. First one I find is a tree filled with CDs. With this lady. Like, hi, I'm, you know, like the beach dudette. Just catching a little peace and quietude. But yeah, you know, if you're like into it, we could play a game of disc appear. I've got like all these grody compact discs. We'll take turns making them disappear. What you want to do, you know, is like, work it out so that I have to take the last CD. Now, I consider myself to be a person of moderate intelligence. I'm certainly not an idiot. So then why is this so hard? I seriously spend like a half hour on this puzzle alone. I mean, I get what I have to do, but I never figured out a pattern. Do I just not have enough foresight? It seems like any time I thought I had it on lock, Beach Dudette still beats me. Man! At least every time you lose, you get a CD of some all-time classics, like this one, Ukulele Bob Alone at Last, or The Pope's Favorite Polkas, or my personal favorite, Yodelers with Laryngitis. Mm-hmm. I believe I first discovered them through Now That's What I Call Music 43. I did eventually win, but only because the layout started in just the right way that I had the advantage. Whatever, I'll take it. And I'll take this tube of sunscreen. Now, between a choice of a door or a monkey, I always go with monkey. The monkey's minigame isn't all that special. It's basically a game of Simon, and it was super easy. So, I can confirm that I am indeed smarter than a monkey. He gets a cup of goo, and then there's this lady. She's a ticket salesman for a special performance, which is the next challenge. And this one is... kinda dumb. You have to jump and bump up notes to match them in place on a music sheet, and the notes are coming from this anthropomorphic saxophone's... This saxophone's... 
Uh... Getting all the notes in place gets you the next ingredient, a rose, and passage to a new part of the island. That's where I come across this puzzle. These ones were my favorites as a kid, because I could figure them out. There are three of them, actually. A boat, a door, and a candle. They explode into pieces, and all you gotta do is put them back together to make the object again. Or arrange them into a penis, whichever. The next puzzle is this one, the tire yard. It's one of those challenges where you gotta stack up the tires to get the ingredient, but the larger tires can't go on top of the smaller ones. Not a problem, I was always really good at these. You just gotta move it around so that... Ah, oh, crap, okay, hold on. Shift them so that when the tire... Okay, hold on. Okay, I got this. Alright, so once you get the largest tire over here, you can- Damn it! I'm smart! Ah, there we go. Got the oil can. Ah, you finally got it right. Buzz off, Quandry. I'm getting tired of you. Oh! I'm sorry, is your name Hostess? Because that was a zinger! Here's another puzzle. This guy is trapped, and you need to guess the padlock combination to let him out. Which is simple enough, except that one of my guesses was so bad, it killed him. Nah, not really. That's actually his code to let you know if you got the numbers right. Winky faces mean you have a number right but in the wrong spot, and a brimming with hope face means a digit is completely right. It's process of elimination from there. And then he gives you his most prized possession. A lock of Elvis's hair. Huh. I thought for sure it would have been his rope for a belt. Oh hey, this room! There's a bottle of green gas at the end that you gotta grab. And all you gotta do is- <laughs> This is the only puzzle that actually resembles a game instead of an educational piece of software. I mean, there's no challenge, it's just dodging lasers. Now this kid... Oh, this kid. Hello, I am the tax collector of Secret Island. I won't let you cross until you play a game of Tax Factor. Nerd. In this challenge, there are a bunch of numbered tokens. You pick up a token and you get that point amount. Then, the tax collector picks up all the factors of that number and gets those points. However, you can't pick up any prime numbers or any numbers without any factors. Excuse me one moment. Yup, it says right here, ages 8 to adult. Do you remember when you were 8 years old and you're learning about factors and prime numbers? Cuz I don't! I was still learning different nicknames you can use for an erection. Even now, this is the hardest puzzle in the game. I grasped the concept early on, but it's still difficult to execute. I get it, get rid of as many low factors first before taking a higher token, but even when it seems like I got a huge lead, he comes from behind with a ridiculous amount. When I finally did win, I certainly didn't feel any smarter. It did make me begin to rationally hate starfish though. REGENERATING BASTARDS! The only challenges left are this maze, which is completely uninteresting, and this one, Catapult Fun Times. This is another cool one. You need to feed the Frog Mountain a fly, which you get by knocking one down with the catapult. You have to figure out the right amount of power and direction for each shot. After it's open, you have to distract the pterodactyl to pass through. The best way to distract him? By using Quandry branded popcorn, of course. Catapult one of those just right and... <laughs> You remember the time you're in the movie theater and you got a popcorn kernel stuck in the back of your throat and you're all like <laughs> That's the terrible pain he's going through right now. And with the frog eggs from the cave, I have everything I need. On the harder difficulty, even the recipe itself is a puzzle on its own. One by any other name? Oh, the rose! Something slick but crude? Ah, the oil can. An under the table decoration? What is that even supposed to- Oh, ABC gum! Already been chewed? Ha <laughs> I remember when that was funny in the 90s. Even in his recipe, Dr. Quandry is a jerk. Step one, gather the ingredients. Step two, find a big pot. Step three, dump everything in. Step four, heat it up till it's so hot that you can't drink it. Step five, drink it. Enjoy your beverage of searing pain. It's like drinking a fresh Hot Pocket. Drinking the elixir gives another horrifying mouth cam shot, and then I'm back at the fair! Dr. Quandry says congratulations, and then the game repeats itself right back to the beginning. Huh. A little anticlimactic, don't you think? But you know what? I don't care. I still had a good time playing this game, and I think it actually did make me smarter as a kid. That's why my final rating for this game is a Mensa out of 10. 
The secret island of Dr. Quandary may be designed for kids, but it's fundamentally a point-and-click adventure game with some excellent puzzles that work great for developing young minds. Critical thinking, problem solving, even just some timing, and I think it really can make someone smarter. The premise and visuals really bring it all together, and I could easily recommend this to some other kids who are looking to learn while they play. For as popular as Number Munchers and the Oregon Trail got, I'm a little sad that Dr. Quandry didn't take off. It could even come back as an iPhone game, and it would still be great for kids. At least they would be able to use their fancy technology to figure out what the heck a factor is. Or new words for boner. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and like it, and share it with your friends who might get some laughs out of it too. Or if you're in the mood for some more, check out my Worst Father Ever playthrough of Heavy Rain, or the Highlight video. Either one will get you your yucks, ya yuck junkie.